What is going on guys welcome back to the C++ tutorial series in today's video we're going to talk about header files so let us get right into it. All right, so the basic idea behind a header file is that we can include functionality from other source files. And imagine you have a big program, a big C++ application, and it has tons of functionalities, tons of functions, constants, all of that. You usually don't want to put all of this into one file. You don't want to have a thousand functions down here. You don't want to have, have a thousand constants up here and so on. Um, you want to usually split that up into different files. And what you do in C++ to do that is you uh, create a separate source file with the functionality and then you create a header file that allows you to just include that source file. So how can you think about that? Um, let's say we're going to create uh, a new folder here. We're going to call it includes. This is not mandatory. I just like to do it like that. Uh, I also think that it's a better practice to have a separate um, folder or directory with your includes than to just have them all in the same directory. And what you do here is let's say we have uh, a certain module that we call calculations.cpp. And in here, we're not going to have a main function, we're just going to have some func uh, functionality, so some functions essentially. Uh, and we're going to do some very basic functions like int at int x, int y, return x plus y, int sub, int x, int y, returns x minus y and we can also have a basic I don't know uh, void uh, output message and we're going to give it a string so for this we need io stream in here we're going to give it a string um, std string message and we're just going to output that message. So we're going to say std cout message std endline. There you go, like that. So those are the functions that we now have to find in this calculation, CPP, whatever. Uh, usually, of course, you will have different source files for different, more complex uh, functionalities. For example, if you have a video chat app, you could have uh, one CPP file for the video uh, recording or for the video uh, for the video processing itself, then you could have an, an additional source file for the actual sending of the video data via sockets with uh, all the packaging into structs and into bytes and so on. Um, so you have just different functionalities outsourced into different files. And in this case, we want to include this file into the main CPP file. And theoretically, what we could do is we could just go ahead and say include. And the convention is that when you include your own libraries, you're using uh, quotation marks when you include libraries of the C++ library. Uh, so commonly used libraries, uh, you're going to use these angle brackets here. Uh, in our case, so we're going to use uh, these quotation marks and we're going to say includes calculations.cpp. So this would be possible, but it's a bad practice as I like to always say. So we can see that this is possible by just saying std cout at and you can see we already find that function, even though it's not defined in this particular file. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to find it if I remove the include statement. No, then it's not going to find it, as you can see. So VS Code is quite intelligent here. Calculations dot, or actually, sorry. In, includes calculations dot cpp again. Uh, we can now use the add function here and just add 10 to 20, for example, and then print the result. As you can see, uh, so we're going to just run this. And there will be no problem with that. Now this, however, as I mentioned, is a bad practice. Because uh, for many reasons, first of all, it's not the convention. Second of all, sometimes you will want to keep the CPP file, the actual implementations of your programs, you want to keep them private, not always, sometimes you're going to do open source, sometimes it just doesn't matter. But sometimes you don't want to give the CPP file to people, you just want to give them a file that tells uh, the user or the actual yeah, the actual user of the library, what functionality uh, does this uh, CPP, uh, CPP file have? So what are the function signatures? What can I do with them? And then 
when you include it, you just work with it without being able to look at the implementations. And for this, we use header files. So what we do is we create a, a second file that we name exactly like the source file. So calculations, it has to have the same name, dot h. We're not going to call it cpp, but dot h. Um, and in here, what we're going to do is we're going to put all of these uh, of these definitions, but without the implementation. So we're going to say very simply, um, at actually int at int int. That's it. Int sub int int. And we're going to need IO stream here because otherwise it won't recognize the string. At least I think that's the case. Um, void output message std string is the parameter. So as you can see, we don't have any functionality in here. We also don't really say uh, that we're including anything just because it has the same name, it's going to be linked later on to the uh, source file. And now what we do is here, we don't include the CPP file, we include the header file. And because we're doing that, we're actually accessing the functionality of the CPP file. So as you can see, this file is only related to the headers files only including the header file. This header file in here only has the signatures, it's not implementing anything, it's not even including the impl implementations from CPP, it's just linked because it has the same uh, name. And then because of that, we can still use the add function in here. But in order to be able to do that, we need to compile and link it in a right way. Now, if you just go ahead and click F6 using the VS Code uh, compilation plugin for C++, you're going to see that this is going to fail because you're actually just compiling main.cpp without any connection to the includes here. Even though it's written inside of this here, uh, by just specifying C++, uh, G++ uh, main.cpp, we cannot really compile that. So if we want to link all these files, what we're going to do is we're going to open up a new terminal here. Uh, and we're going to say, first of all, I'm going to show you that it doesn't work that uh, simply, you cannot just type uh, G++ minus O main accent and then just go with main.cpp. Because then of course, you get the exact uh, error that we that we got before because what is add int int, we don't know that. If you want to know this, you also need to uh, compile the other source file. So we also need to say, uh, calculations actually includes calculations dot cpp. And what you're going to end up with is a main dot exe file. Uh, that is one single file, but still has the functionality that we want it to have. So as you can see, we get 30 as a result when we run it. Uh, even though we actually uh, are not implementing the add function in that file. So obviously, it recognized that uh, calculation CPP is actually uh, where where these functions are implemented. And since main CPP is including the source file, um, it is it is able to do that. So you can also see as a proof that this is the reason why it works, that if we remove this here, uh, first of all, of course, uh, we're going to get an error in Visual Studio Code, but we're also not going to be able to execute this command here. So, so it's still not declared in that scope. So we need to have that include statement, we need to have that header file, uh, we can also try to remove the header file, of course, but then obviously, it's not going to work because this is a reference to the header file. So you can see that this is how you need to do it, you need to have a header file with the signatures, then you need to include that header file. And then you need to have uh, another file with the same name, a source file where you have the implementations. And the reason you use a header file is first of all, for structure, you don't want to have any implementations in the header file. Um, but you also use it because it's just a way to to hide your source, uh, source code or to keep it away from the end user, so to say, end user, you know, in a relative sense, because you're still a programmer, but uh, that's the basic idea behind using header files. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.